Hey guys, today we are in BMW with a diesel engine and I'm going to show you how to check the DPF. I have an awesome application over here on the Android device, but before I will show you uh, this uh, and how to use it, let me talk you through some of the basic points. So this is BMW X1 E84 with 2.0 diesel engine and uh, the engine code is N47, I believe, and it's equipped with DPF. DPF is designed to trap unburned fuel particles inside so it's a particle tra uh, trap and as it gets uh, full of those uh, uh, of those particles uh, at some point the engine control module will trigger regeneration it will raise the exhaust temperature and the um, temperature inside the DPF uh, will increase also and those uh, particles will be burnt away uh, leaving uh, free space and a little bit of ash and at some point after a lot of miles your DPF will be full of this ash which cannot be removed by standard regeneration anymore and this um, this load inside the DPF will create back pressure to your engine because the exhaust system the DPF uh, is now restricted by the by the ash so we are going to check what's the back pressure over here and we are going to also check uh, values of the DPF with this application so this uh, app is called B2. I'm going to link it in the description below this video. It requires some kind of adapter. You can use any adapter. In my case, I have um, Carista dongle over here, but I believe any Elm 327 um, device should work here as well. So first of all, we are going to go select car just to configure it. And we are going to select that this is BMW X1. E84 from 2010 and the engine should be automatically detected. You can see that there's a lot of uh, uh, vehicles supported. So let's press OK. Let's go to connection. Let's make sure that the Bluetooth device is, is selected. It's an Elm 327 type uh, mm, device. We are, not, we are not going to touch anything over here because this was selected to this car. Any vehicle uh, made in 2007 or later should be set to the can. So let's press connect. And after a few seconds, we should see um, if the device, if the application is connected with the vehicle. So let's give it a few more seconds. And we have green indicator over here, which should mean that we are connected connected to the vehicle so right now you can go to live data and we will have a lot of live data uh, from the vehicle we can check the voltage coolant temperature and so on we also have uh, some information about the ash and soot inside the DPF but uh, with uh, this many values there's about 10 or 12 values the refresh rate is not so good so let's go back and let's select let's select DPF section and over here we have uh, we have uh, four readouts and two additional ones. Uh, we have check marks if the regeneration is requested by the ECU and if the re regeneration is active. And in both those cases, we can see that it is not. The regeneration is not in progress right now. We can ch check the coolant temperature, the exhaust temperature, and we can see how much soot there is waiting f uh, waiting in the DPF to be burnt away and how much ash there's inside. Also, there's, um, uh, there's a graph over here. There's a bar over here showing us that the DPF is at 19% right now. So uh, when it gets to close to 100, the um, regeneration will be triggered. Okay, so you can trigger it manually over here with the regeneration button. We are not going to do this right now, but let's go to more. And over here we can check additional uh, additional additional live data. We can check if the regeneration was locked for some reason and if it was interrupted before. It was not, so we have two uh, uh, marks saying that. And we can check when it was last regenerated 128 kilometers ago, so not that uh, not that uh, uh, long ago. And we can see the uh, remaining distance of the DPF because in BMW uh, the ECO is not only checking how uh, full it is, but also it's giving it uh, mileage, total mileage that uh, cannot be exceeded. So after 
reaching this mileage, you will have to do something with your DPF. Replace it or cleaning mechanically or inspect it or do something else. Let's, let's not go into this. Let's not go into this. Right now, let's perform the back pressure test. So let's go over here. And what we are going to do is start the test. And while the test is running, we need to slowly raise the RPM of the engine. And we will see what's the back pressure in the exhaust manifold at uh, given RPMs. So this will tell us if the DPF is OK. So let me place this uh, close to the rev counter. Maybe let's place it over here. So let's start the test. We have some information and we have some expected values. We should not uh, get above uh, those values. So at idle, we should have 35. We can see in the background that we have about 25, maybe 27. And uh, at 2000, 3000, and 4000, we should get 75 or less, uh, 130 or less, and 200 or less. So let's press OK. And the application right now is ready and I'm going to slowly slowly raise RPM to 400 4000 I'm sorry and we will check what's on the display of the Android device okay and we have the results we can see that it's below the values that we've seen in the information just um, just a minute before. So I believe this DPF uh, DPF filter is okay. So let's go back. Let's go back. Let's say that those back pressure values were too high, or maybe the soot level over here is too high, and you want to perform the regeneration. So we can go to regeneration. You have some information over here, and you can learn over here that the engine needs to be uh, hot, at least 75 degrees. You need to drive the vehicle with a speed of 60 kilometers an hour or more. You need a quarter of, uh, of fuel in the tank. And if there are some fault codes, uh, uh, stored in the engine control modules those codes if those codes are related to the DPF you might not be able to do this but there's an option over here a small checkbox and this will make sure that the application will will clear those codes periodically and uh, during the regeneration allowing you to perform it even though it should not be possible in the first place okay i'm not going to do dpf regeneration right now but basically all, all you need to, um, to know is over here in this application once again i'm going to link it in the description below this video and i believe that's uh, pretty much it for today give me thumbs up if you like this uh, simple tutorial and subscribe for future ones see you soon